Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from Step by Step Painting and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to show you how to paint Luna Magnolias. So we have a Luna moth and magnolias in a tree branch surrounded by one of the swirly moon style skies. And let's go over brushes and colors. So we'll be using a three quarter inch flat wash brush, a number four round brush, and a number eight round brush. There's quite a few colors in this, although you can simplify some of these colors. So we're gonna use Cad Yellow Medium, Quinacridone Magenta, Phthalo Blue, Hooker's Green Hue Permanent, Bright Aqua Green, Bunbleach Titanium is a color you can opt out if you don't want that color. Titanium White, Mars Black, and raw umber. You can opt out of raw umber too and just do silhouette black branches instead. If you opt out of the beige color, you may not get that kind of yellow glow in there, but you can still kind of mix a light blue for that um, kind of that beige cream glow that's going around the moon. So that's why I said you could omit that color if you like simplifying the color palette. Let's go ahead and get started. We're using 11 by 14 and I have my canvas placed in a horizontal mode and we're going to start by blending our sky. I'm gonna load my three quarter flat brush in titanium white. The other colors on my palette are unbleached titanium, bright aqua green, phthalo blue, and Mars black. Let's take our white and let's paint a medium sized circle, kind of in the upper right area of the canvas, a little centered, but a little bit kind of upper right from the center. And I'm just going to paint a circle. So this is the moon, and we want this white circle to be larger than what the moon's actually going to be because that white layer is gonna help blend our other colors. So I'm gonna form this circle until it's maybe six to eight inches in diameter. Big circle, relatively, thick layer of paint for this painting in a circular direction. And when I get to about that size, I am gonna grab my beige color. So without rinsing the brush, so there's still white on my brush, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna dip it in a little bit of that beige color. I'm gonna start on the outside of that circle I'm gonna gently blend it into the white. So I'm still painting in a circle. This entire sky is in a circular direction. This is a pretty dark color compared to that white. So I want to blend this in and take that white that's on the canvas already and drag that into our unbleached titanium color so that it blends to more of a gradient. And it's not just a drastic decrease in, um, brightness. I'm going to take this beige and extend it out a little bit further. This beige color will blend nicely with our blues and will help with the transition of the color without making it look too green in the sky versus if I was using yellow it would be a little bit too green. So I'm taking more of this white and blending it with our beige color kind of a unique color to use in a sky. Very, very pretty color with our turquoise and our dark blue colors that we'll be adding. I'm gonna mix beige and white together here. I wanna bring this out a little bit further because I know that this base color that I'm adding is gonna blend with our layer of blue. So without rinsing the brush, I have beige, white, and now I have aqua on my brush. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna introduce my aqua start on the outside of our beige and gently bring that in. You wanna make sure you're only using tiny, tiny bits of that aqua, it's a strong color. It will take over if you add too much to your brush. So only add a teeny tiny bit. And when you drag that in to your color in the middle, you wanna just barely let your brush skid the surface of the canvas because then our blue is just gonna take over. So see how I just have streaks of that blue that kind of took over our beige? You just wanna be very, very gentle with that. 
I'm going to add more titanium white to my palette. I'm going to great take this white and mix aqua and then grab some of my phthalo blue. So now I'm going to introduce my phthalo blue. That's that really dark blue. Same thing, starting on the outside of the aqua, paint circular strokes and then gently start to blend it towards the aqua without letting it take over. So just like the aqua, this phthalo blue is a very strong color. That's why we mixed it with the aqua first on our palette. We still are kind of in a medium brightness area of the sky, but pretty soon it's gonna get drastically darker. Take some of this aqua. So you can even, so titanium white is like your best friend with blending these colors. So if it's too dark or it's, it's not blending, grab a little bit of white on your brush and that'll help get your colors to blend. So just be real careful not to take too much of this blue and go into the bright, bright area. So we still want that white circular center with our beige glow. We don't want too much dark in that area. I mean, I can show you how to blend that a little bit better where it goes from light to dark. Right now, I'm just getting this blue onto the canvas. When we get to the corner areas, we're gonna start using black because that's where it's very, very dark. So when you're ready, when you get to like a corner, without rinsing your brush, grab your Mars black and paint the corner. You still wanna go in that kind of curved circular direction even though we're off the canvas when we get to the corner. But use that black to blend. Black blends very nicely with phthalo blue. You only need a little bit of black. Uh, also a strong color that will take over if we use too much of it. And then I'm going to kind of skip ahead and get these corners done. So these corners are black that are also painted in that curved direction. So I know that this is the darkest and I just from there I'll need to just add more phthalo blue to fill in that white gap where it meets the rest of the sky. So I'm going to load some more phthalo blue onto my palette. This one is actually ultramarine. I grabbed the wrong color, so we're gonna do the right color. There's our phthalo. Ultramarine blue is not too far off from phthalo, so if you ever need to substitute, ultramarine is also a very strong bluish color, actually. Just mix those together and it's not going to make such a huge, di huge difference. But we want to take this dark blue and blend it into our black. So it should start be start showing up as a like a deep dark blue. And then when we get to the rest of the sky, this part of the sky, you might find, oh no, that's dry. I'm not going to be able to blend it. So we'll just do what we can. Get more phthalo blue. Grab some of the... Um, the aqua, the aqua blends very pretty with that. And it's very similar to that area of the sky that's dried and not blended. So I'm just taking this and it's like the same color. I'm taking this aqua color. You can have streaks in the sky. It does not have to blend all the way. In fact, I always say don't over blend. It looks really pretty when you just leave a lot of the streaks of different colors showing. So now I have this kind of area where I want to just go back and see if I can get that beige to kind of blend in with the rest of the sky. It's dry, so I'm not going to be able to do wet on wet blending, but I can add color on top of it. So I'm going to rinse my brush very, very nicely, get all that color off, go back with my beige. It is blending a little bit. Um, if yours is dry, you can mix beige with white and aqua or just beige and aqua, because this part of the sky is beige and aqua. And we can grab that, and that's going to allow it to kind of blend in with the rest of the sky. I'm gonna bring it in closer to the moon, but I want to leave that circle there, pure white circle right in the center. So I actually um, enclosed that circle a little bit so that circle is now a little bit smaller. I'm taking that white and beige, but I'm leaving a lot of those streaks in there, unblended. It looks very pretty. 
So I'll move this aqua, blend this out. Oops, if we get too dark, quickly grab more white, blend that out very gently. Again, we don't want to introduce too much dark where our beige is. So that's that unbleached titanium color. We were able to create this pretty golden glow um, without it turning too green because we're transitioning from like a golden color to a blue color and sometimes it just ends up turning green when we transition. The beige color kind of was a happy medium for us. So I'd say don't overwork your sky. Again, we don't want to over blend it. There's going to be other things in this painting. Stars, tree branches, our giant moth. It's going to be covering up any flaws that you might have. But there's my sky. Um, you'll need to let this dry before going on to the next step and we'll be drawing branches in our next step. So rinse your brush off, take a break, come back, or you can use a little um, blow dryer to dry your painting real quick. And when it's dry, you'll need a chalk pencil or just a regular pencil. I'm using the chalk pencil because it's gonna show up against our dark background. Um, you could also use a piece of chalk for this. So I'm just gonna kind of sketch out how I want my branches. And I found it super helpful to look at pictures of magnolia trees, specifically the branches, and look at how the branches form. They're very kind of twisty, and the branches are kind of minimalistic. It's not a lot of branches on the tree, not a whole a lot of leaves on them, so the blossoms with a few leaves. They remind me a lot like cherry blossom trees and how they're kind of twisty and so this one splits off our giant lunar moth is going to be in the lower left corner so we want to make sure we're not doing any branches down there but this is going to swoop down and kind of go around the moon and I have room for another branch and all the blossoms, magnolia blossoms are going to be facing upright. So none of them, none of them are going to be pointing downwards. So we want to kind of pay attention to where we do our branches. And then, so this one kind of twists down, twists down to the left. There's our branches. So I do have a tracer for this. If you want to look at that, help you with you're drying, even if you, if you, even if you just look at the tracer to kind of help with the drying, or you're welcome to transfer that to your canvas and use that instead. But there's my branches. I'm gonna load my palette with the color Mars Black. If that's if that color has dried by the time you came to this step, you need some fresh Mars Black and some raw umber on your palette too. I'll be using the number eight round brush for this. The eight round has the longer bristles with kind of the finer point. So that's going to be helpful for the branches because we can do thicker strokes and very thin strokes. It's going to load my brush in brown and black. So kind of mix it together on your palette. But you don't need to mix it all the way. I'm going to kind of twist my brush to get that paint distributed towards the end of the bristles. So I'm gonna start in the upper left area of our branch and paint this in solid. So when you press hard, you get the thicker paint stroke. You utilize all those bristles by pressing hard and I'm kind of wiggling my brush on the edges of this branch because the branches are kind of a wavy texture on the edges. So you can create that texture by kind of wiggling your brush so you get those edges of the branch. So this one is going to curve up. And so I'm just using, this is just the black and brown. So it looks pretty dark. It looks like solid black at this point. So I'm just going to kind of curve a little bit sharply to the right and then it's going to go to a point. You can see 
the shape of those branches. They go very thin at the end, go to a point, but they're not like a smooth rectangle shape. They're bumpy and twisty. This one is going to continue to angle downwards. And I'm just reloading my brush. I know you can't see my palette right there. I'm just reloading my brush in the brown and the black combination. You might find that you wanna thin your paint down just a little bit with water and that's fine. It just shouldn't be dripping down the canvas. So you wanna release your pressure on the brush when you get to those smaller parts of the branch using more of the tip of the bristles and less of the full the full amount of bristles in this one. I'm just gonna kind of sketch that little branch that's going up. And this one's just gonna kind of go down and curve up a little bit. All our blossoms are going to be facing upwards. So we wanna make sure the ends of the branches are kind of pointing upwards. I'm gonna make the base of some of these branches go out kind of thicker at the base and then thinner towards the end. And we have another piece of branch in the upper right that is also kind of dipping down and it kind of curves downwards and towards the moon a little bit. Another little piece sticking up. Not all of these end branch pieces will have a flower. Some will have a bud or just a small leaf growing on them. And I'm going to make this kind of go outwards, knowing that there's going to be like a blossom here and it's still going to be a blossom facing up. So I just want to kind of make my branch curve up just a little bit to accommodate for that. And so the magnolia branches don't have a ton of other little branches attached to it. So we're just gonna kind of simplify that. But I want to go in and start highlighting uh, my dark. So I can leave it completely shadow and, or you can decide to leave it completely shadow and simplify this painting. Or if you want to do the highlights, you can load your brush in that beige color that that unbleached titanium color without rinsing your brush. And then on the side of the branch that is facing the moon, you're just going to gently blend in your light color on your branch, just very loosely. And you're doing these kind of loose sort of wavy lines as you're blending that color with a dark color. You can grab a little bit of that white as well, but I'm just doing this on the very, very top edges of the branches that are facing the moon. Small kind of wavy paint strokes. So if it's not blending with that dark color because the dark color dried, um, you can add a little bit of dark color to this. You can highlight and then add a little bit of dark color to your brush and blend that in with the rest of the branch. So a small kind of wavy paint strokes just on the edges on one side of each of your branches. You want to leave that dark shadowy part alone. You can even go in with maybe a lighter area so some of these parts might be just a little bit brighter. I'm going to add maybe a few more branches in here that are little notches that are just kind of sticking out. So those little notches are just going to have like little new growth pieces of leaves, buds. But we're not going to make this super elaborate with many branches. If there are any leftover lines from the drying, you can gently erase them or you can wait until your painting's all the way dry to erase any of those lines. But with those white chalk pencils or just a regular pink 
eraser is enough to erase those lines. It even comes off with a clean, wet paintbrush. We are going to paint the magnolia blossoms next. And with those, we're using two colors, quinacridone magenta and titanium white. So you wanna load your palette with both of those colors and we'll be using the number four round brush for this. So we're gonna paint multiple magnolia blossoms. We can have the little buds that are not open all the way. We can have a few that we only see the side of the blossoms and a few where we can see the flower completely open. So let's start by painting an easy bud. And that one, it's just quinacridone magenta mixed with titanium white, equal parts. And just take your round brush and paint a little bud shape that's curved and flat at the bottom and pointed at the top. Then let's create a different petal color. Let's grab white on our brush without rinsing it off. And let's paint a little petal that's just kind of hugging the side of the bud. It's not ready to open yet. We can do a third little petal over here on the side too. But the trick is just kind of creating variations of that pink so that our petals stand out from one of from each other. So there is our first little bud. We can paint this next flower I'm going to do is one that is open, but not open all the way. We see it on its side. So I'm going to start with the same kind of initial shape and that quinacridone magenta mixed with titanium white. I'm going to grab a little bit of white on the tip of the brush and then just kind of blend in some white just at the top of that petal and drag it down. So we have a petal that's kind of lighter at the top. Wipe the brush off, grab your quinacridone magenta. So this petal is gonna look darker and hopefully stand out from the other one. Same petal shape, but it is slightly kind of opened. It's overlapping that first shape. Grab my white and do that kind of white highlighting thing at the top without losing the shape. We wanna try not to get these petals to all blend together and be the same color. That's why we're trying to alter our color a little bit same thing again, it almost looks like a tulip. So kind of the same shape, overlapping. Wipe the brush off, grab a little bit of the white. I'm just gonna kind of drag this down. And then I'm gonna do another petal on this one. This one's going to be kind of on its side. Same shape. And then do another one over here, kind of curving outwards. Grab a little bit of white. Grab a bit of white on the side. So that kind of highlights the side and lets it stand out. Same with this one. Highlights and it makes it look like it's overlapping the other petals. So that magnolia is kind of on its side, maybe not open all the way yet. And maybe a little bit more white on the far back. It's important not to over blend your petals so they end up kind of mushing together. So let's do another one. So this one's going to be completely open and we can see all the, the, the flower from kind of like a frontal view. So we're going to do these kind of oval shapes that are they're a little bit pointed at the end, but we want to still kind of make them each overlap each other. So we're still playing around with our magenta and white combinations to kind of vary those. So this petal right here ended up being a little bit lighter because I added more white to my brush. And this one, same thing. It's slightly overlapping that other petal. It's lighter. And I kind of just maybe changed the shape of, of it a little bit. It's kind of turned on its side. And then this little petal overlapping, maybe it's kind of going that way. We 
can go and add some dark or light to any of these petals. And then we have room for more petals. So this one and it goes down, same thing, overlaps. Get some more titanium white. You might find you need to go ahead and rinse the brush and start over, and that's okay, especially if we keep loading our brush. And sometimes it just gets overloaded that you just kind of need to either wipe off excess paint or start over. And I'm just taking some of this white and doing white on the edges of some of these petals. So those are our three different kinds of flowers at different stages. So we can just kind of add more throughout the branches. And I'm gonna do another one up here. So this one is going to be like our second flower we did where it's on its side and maybe opened, but not opened all the way. And very close to the edge of the canvas. We have to kind of work with that as well. So did our first shape. And remember all of these flowers are pointing upwards on our branches. It's darker color to overlap our first color. And because we're close to the edge of the canvas, there's not a whole lot of detail we can add in there. I'm going to add a bud over here so the buds are very easy. Just want to make sure that it is, for the most part, going upwards, although they can be slanted a little bit. I just didn't want to do an upside down bud. So, same thing, it's a little bit smaller changing that color a little bit for some of the other petals that we can see. I want to add another branch for another one of these buds. So specifically on the left side, I'm going to go back and grab my number eight round brush and paint another branch. So this one's just going upwards. And then going back with my quinacridone magenta and doing a little bud on this guy. And then we have room for another kind of fully opened blossom. So this one is going to be, we can see all the petals. We're doing overlapping petals, changing the um, magenta and white combination. And each of them are just slightly overlapping each other. Going back and maybe adding a little bit of light or dark to some of the edges of the petals. I'll try to keep it simple. Um, there's a little bit of yellow that we can see inside of the open flowers, but we'll need to let that dry before we can add that sort of yellow part in the opening. I'm gonna actually maybe add another petal in here on this one.
and this other little guy up here, I'm going to give another petal. Next, we are going to paint the leaves, and there's not a whole lot of leaves in this painting. Mostly the leaves are at the base of the uh, flower buds, and there's just a few leaves kind of growing on the tree, but not very many leaves. We're going to load our palette with Hooker's Green Hue Permanent, and back to our number four round brush. I'm going to start by mixing a little bit of white into this green to kind of lighten the green up. and. Let's start by doing leaves on this little flower over here. And I'm going to do just a basic little um, teardrop shape. And I'm going to do two at the base of this flower and maybe one just kind of hanging down. But keep it very simple. And then I'm going to do another set of leaves on the bud of this flower. Very small little shapes that slightly overlap each other. Same with this little flower bud. And this one over here. and two small leaves overlapping the base of this flower as well. And there are a few leaves kind of on their own on branches. So there's one little guy over here, very small leaf. And again, you can kind of change the color so you can add white into it to kind of make it brighter, especially if it's in a darker area like the upper right corner. And then some of these branches that we painted earlier are going to get a little leaf on them. These are very small little buds of new growth on the tree. But again, we're not going crazy and adding too many leaves. You can even do like a little dot. That represents a little bud of new growth on the tree. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow on the inside of the two flowers that where we can see the opening. So I'm going to rinse my brush off and use Ked Yellow Medium Hue. We might need to add a little bit of white into that yellow to brighten it up a little bit. So let's load our foreround in some white. Mix our white and yellow. That one grabbed green, so I gotta kind of add more white in there. And then just like a little circle or a little oval right in the center part of each of the magnolia flowers that are all the way open. So if that doesn't show up, get your white, add a little bit of white into that yellow, and that'll help brighten that yellow up. Next, we are going to draw the moth, and I'm going to use the white chalk pencil, especially in this area because it's a dark area. But if you don't have the white chalk pencil, you can use a piece of chalk or just a regular drawing pencil. But I do recommend drawing this out first. It makes the painting part a little bit more easier. And of course, you're welcome to use the template that I have for this tutorial if you want to do that. So let's start by drawing a diagonal line. And that's going to help us with the symmetry in this moth drawing. So drawing a line, a diagonal line, that's the center of our moth. And we're going to do a little half circle shape for the head at the end of that line. And then I'm going to draw the wings. So this wing and this wing. 
I'm going to try to keep the symmetry here. So like a, almost a straight line, but curved upwards a little bit. And then this part curves inwards and then diagonal up. This part curves inwards and diagonally up and meets in the center. So there's the top part of his wing. But I'm going to draw a triangle inside of this. So for the body, it's a triangle that goes up to the head area and down. And then his second, his bottom part of the wings, two curves. And then we can sketch the tail. So this goes down and then curves outwards. These are very thin pieces and they're wavy, kind of twisty. So I'm going to draw these twisty lines to represent the tail of that and then kind of forms a triangle and points up and meets to that center body part where we had that triangle. And then I'm just going to go back over my drawing to help kind of define the wings, make sure the wings are symmetrical and even, even though they're, it's kind of painted at an angle, or it's going to be painted at an angle, so it's kind of an awkward drawing to get symmetrical. And our head, the antennae, we can do little two lines, but then I'm going to create kind of a leaf shape around both of those lines. Now we can start painting the Luna Moth in. So let's make sure our palette has green, yellow, and white on it. And let's use our number four round brush and we're going to create this kind of pretty light green color. So I'm going to grab a whole bunch of white and just a little bit of green and a little bit of yellow. So maybe like four parts white, one part green, one part yellow, maybe a little bit green. It should just be a really light sort of lime green color. Little teeny bit of water in there just to kind of loosen that color up. And so there's my pretty color. And I'm gonna start by painting the wings. So I'm just taking my four round brush and I'm just going to start outlining the shape of that wing. So if there's any leftover lines from the drawing, those will erase later. So you are allowed to adjust your drawing as you paint your object in. So I'm just outlining the shape and then I'll fill it in solid. And I'll also create some variations in this green. If you look closely at a picture of a Luna moth, you'll notice there's little bits of blue and aqua in the wing color. And we can incorporate that into our wing color as well. So I'm just kind of dragging that paint color out to fill in the shape of that wing. And then let's grab a little bit of green, a darker green, yellow, just making maybe a darker version of that color. And so just on the end of this wing, I'm taking that darker color and just kind of blending it in and kind of dragging it inwards. It's a little bit darker on the end of that wing. Drag it in, doing some wet on wet blending. And we can add a little bit of aqua into this as well, which would look really pretty because there's aqua in our background. So I'm grabbing a little bit of this bright aqua green because by now that aqua is dry on my palette. A little bit of aqua on the very tip of the brush and I'm just going to kind of drag that in and it will blend very nicely with our lime green colors. So basically on the other side, we're gonna do the exact same thing so I'm going to mix my lime green color again on my palette. So I'm getting more titanium white. 
kind of mix this lime green color. I did not rinse the brush. There's still a little aqua on my brush and that's okay. If we don't get an exact match, that is fine. So I'm gonna paint, outline the, the outer shape or the inner part of the, the shape of the wing, fill it in solid, and then I'll add my darker green and aqua on the end of the wing. I'm leaving that inner triangle shape, the part where the body is, I'm leaving that blank for now because I will be painting that yellow. So darker greens, blend those in on the end, and then we can add our aqua. We're gonna add yellow on the middle part of the moth, the body, the triangle area. And with the brush not rinsed off, I'm just gonna grab some of the yellow on my brush. So this cad yellow, so it's gonna be more of a greenish yellow color. It should stand out. If it's not, you can just add more yellow to it more yellow and white. I'm just painting that triangular area. I'm gonna add more yellow. So this part is gonna look a little furry, have some texture, but for now we can just paint it solid and add texture later to it. If we even wanna add texture to it, we can simplify this if needed. So I am gonna rinse the brush off for painting the head. We're gonna do titanium white for the head. Let's get all that color off of the brush. Kind of start over here. Grab our white, and that's a little half circle shape for the head. bristle kind of frayed outwards so I ended up having to make that head a little bit larger but that's okay and then if you can get that little line you can outline that little line for the antennae um, otherwise you can try it with a paint pen or a little tiny detail brush so I did yellow and then I'm doing it's almost like we're painting like a little feather these little tiny diagonal marks going outwards from that center line to give them that fuzzy antennae. And then I'm gonna take this white and just kinda of drag it down over that yellow triangle area to create a little bit of that like furry texture on the body and then bring this down a little bit further. We still need to paint the bottom wings which we could do now. So I'm gonna actually make those wings. So I'm making that lime green color, mixing the green, yellow, and white, kind of the same technique, but I wanna add darker green to the part that's under, so this part's under that top wing to make it darker so that it stands out from the lighter wing above it. See how that's darker right there where it's touching that other wing. That's gonna allow that to stand out better. We can still do the same thing, add our aqua color in there. For the tail, I'm just gonna paint like this wavy line to try to create the illusion of like this twisty tail. So like adding white in the middle part of this line but painting kind of this wavy line in there with the white right there in the center. And then for this one, same thing, getting that darker green in there just under that lighter green, part, upper part of the wing, and then fill that in. Grabbing my lighter color. 
and I'm going to do this kind of the twisty thing on the tail. So grabbing that white and then paint. It's like this kind of a wavy line on the tail. And then a little bit of white right there at the center part of the body just kind of disappeared in there. So I'm just going back and sort of redefining that with the white without trying to get it to blend too much into green. We can add more yellow in there. So this triangle actually extends further down. I'm going to add turquoise to our bottom set of wings and a little bit of turqu turquoise to the tail too. So just like what we did with the upper part of the wings. And I can wipe my brush off a little bit or I can start over if I want to. But a little bit of turquoise. I'm just going to kind of twist that into the tail area without losing too much of that color that I already highlighted with the white. And a little bit of turquoise down here. Blend that up into my green. We are going to further detail the moth by adding blue to the very top edge of the wing. So this is phthalo blue and a clean number four round brush. So I'm going to kind of twist the brush because I'm going to do a small line and I'm just going to outline the very top edge of the wing. So just the top edge. Let's have it be a little bit um, thicker towards the center. So this part right here, a little bit thicker and then it goes thin. And then I also outlined the bottom part of the head. So this part's thicker and then it goes thin. Um, if you want, you can add just a little bit of black into it to make it a little bit darker, especially if it's not standing out against the background, you can darken that with the black. And then we're going to do these sort of eye design patterns on the wings. Luna moths have this sort of eye shape on the top and bottom of the wing. So I'm going to start with the yellow. So this is primary yellow or um, cad yellow medium. And I'm just going to do like this sort of like oval shape with a line attached to it. So this line right here attaches to the top part of the wing. So it goes down and then curve. So this is just the yellow. If you want to brighten the yellow, you can add a little bit of white into it. So wipe the brush off a little bit and grab your blue. And then on one side of each of these, just going to do a dark blue line on each side on the inner part. So there's the top set. And then down here, these ones are going to look a lot more like eyes. So I'm going to just do two eye shapes, starting with the yellow. I'm going to wipe the brush, grab the blue, and then do blue dots in the center of both of those. And then outline the top of each of those so it looks like an eyelid. Rinse the brush and grab your titanium white and we're going to outline the bottom part of each of the top parts of the wings. And this is, this is really going to help get that wing to stand out a bit better. So just outline the part up into the blue outline and then a little bit of white right there in the bottom part of the triangle of the body and then a little bit of white outlining. I have to really kind of twist the brush to get that thin line in there. But I outlined white in the bottom part of the bottom set of wings. We can do some of the, the line texture on the wings. I just did this kind of like abstractly, just kind of like did a few very thin lines going outwards, curved going outwards from the center part of the body. Um, if you want to detail that up further with like a detail paintbrush or even like a white paint pen, you can. 
but I just did some very subtle white lines on each of the wings to kind of get the line vein texture on the wings. If you have any residual drying lines, chalk lines, you can erase those. So I'm using a little baby wipe to gently erase leftover chalk pencil lines, although you can use like a pink eraser to do that. Um, you just want to make sure it's dry and you're not going to smudge anything from erasing that. And then we have our moth. There's a couple other details we can add on to him, but I am going to actually jump ahead and do some stars around the sky next. So there's a lot of blank areas of the sky. We can fill that up with some really uh, whimsical twinkling stars. So I'm going to use a number eight round brush for this and just paint little dots. And some of these dots are just going to be little actual star diamonds. So I can do a little dot and then I can drag that upwards and down and diagonally to create the little twinkling star. And that's made easy because the tip of this brush is very, very fine. So I can do those detailed little star shapes. So I'm just painting that kind of all throughout the sky. You can do constellations if you want. You can keep some clustered, clustered together or some far apart. So there's a little bit of variety in these stars. And lastly, I'm going to do just a few more details on our moth, including some more of the fur texture. And also with the white, we'll do a little dot in the center of our little eye patterns. So one little dot in the center of each of those. And I'm going to go and add more stars. Another final detail I'm going to do with the moth is add a little bit of dark outlining. Now you may find that you don't need this, but I'm going to just do a little bit. So this is the eight round and I'm using the blue. And so like right here, just under where we did that white outline, but very, very thin, fine line under there. That's going to get that wing to pop just a little bit more. And then just very loosely on the outer edge of the wing and the bottom edge of this little bit on the tail. So I did like that wavy line on the tail. Line the outer edge of this swing. So pretty much loose outlining on almost the entire moth down the middle of the antennae helps to get 
it to pop a little bit better. It gives it a little bit more contrast and defines the shape. And that is it. This is the conclusion of how to paint Luna Magnolias. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.